right, everybody. I am back. Had a little bit of internet problems the other day, but hopefully it's all figured out. So I hope you're having all a great time today and this week so far. You've had time to get out into your sketchbooks or on a canvas or some kind of creative uh, venture that you've been on this week. It's important. You have to be creative. It does your mind and body a lot of good. At least it does me. <laughs> so today I thought I would do some dahlias and Queen Anne's lace. So this is the dahlias that I have growing in my garden. I've got a couple colors. And this one's called a pom-pom dahlia because, as you can see, the petals curve all the way to the back. And it's like a little ball. I love these. You get a lot of flowers on a plant. And I think they're just amazing in how they line up. It's almost fake looking. Um, this one is another, this one is, is a bud form. So you can see that it gets this little kind of a greenish center in there. I, I really like that. I think it's very pretty. And then I've got, um, after it loses its petals, it looks like this. Uh, and it's kind of interesting. So there, uh, these are where all the seeds will be in here. And it almost looks like uh, a bud, but it's not. It's the seed part. And I just love the way it's colored in that little bit of the red color, but um, that kind of citron green very interesting. I love looking at flowers, as you know. <laughs> and this is Queen Anne's Lace, and I have a little area in my back where I let meadow weeds and flowers grow. Because I, I just love the look of them. Now there's the flower itself, and they're very interesting, as you can see. The back of them. This one's uh the secondary bloom so it's not as big but it does have those little brackets oh, in the back here you can see it more on this one this is the bud after it's flowered and it closes up and the flowers which were white once they get pollinated they get these little balls on them and that's where the seed is so, and then they just close up into this little tight form. I think it's, they're so awesome. And that's what they look like. So I thought we could paint some of these today and I'll show you how I'm going to do it. And I think I'm going to start off with the uh, Queen Anne's lace. And I'll make mine a little bit bigger, but I just thought I would show you the uh, how they look at least. And the little tiny, tiny little flowers. I think they're what? Uh, one looks like four petals on, a, on each one of these little wee flowers. And then it has kind of a ferny looking uh, leaf. So I'm going to put some of these and I, I want to draw the uh, bud form also and maybe show some on the side view um, as well as the uh, front view. Usually they're uh, facing up like that. This one was kind of on an angle. That's why the buds are like they are. 
and we can they can get as big as mm, four six inches sometimes which is awesome and what we need to do is uh, i've got a um, small brush here this is a uh, number one liner by one stroke donna dewberry paint brush uh, so you want a fairly fine brush and we're going to use some uh, nice greens here. This is Simoleon Green by uh, Delta Ceramco. And I'm going to be using craft paint in my journal. This is my uh, one of my journals I use for experimenting in and that type of thing. Uh, here's some mint julep green and I thought this would be good for see the how it's kind of lighter color on some of it and then a nice darker green also uh, now you if you don't have a darker green you can always add a little bit of black to your green you don't need a whole lot and paper towels or there we go i'm terrible i'm a messy painter so i always have to have paper towels <laughs> okay uh, i do have black green here that i'm going to be using I'll just put it over the side here and I have some magnolia white uh, yellow to it, just a touch. You don't want to really see too much of uh, the yellow. And that's all we need for these. And they're fairly easy to do. They're stems are fairly fairly long so i think i'm going to probably let's do a few of these so i'm just going to come up here and we'll do uh maybe a nice big one that's open yet hasn't uh basically actually see that this is a jelly plate um, print. So this was actual uh, flower print that I used a flower and printed with white. It's almost got that uh, look to it. So I could actually use this to my advantage and uh, just put a bunch of lines in because you want to do the lines first um, that these flowers you can see the flower, there's all these little stems that come out from the center. So you kind of want to do that. Now, um, what I can do, hmm. do I want to use that or not? Hmm. Maybe not. I'm going to keep that for a background, but I will put all of those little stems brackets whatever you want to call them that come from the center of this and then what you see is they just comes up a little bit and then the stems will come off of that. They're fairly long. I'm gonna do kind of a side view of this one. So I'm gonna see more around the edge here. And that's okay. They'll be a little longer than the brackets, 
down below. So make your stems out, uh, spread out a little bit. And there'll be quite a few. So you can uh, put quite a, a few in there. Now I'm, again, I'm, I'm seeing this from a side view. So we're going to get a little bit of a different perspective here. And then we have little flowers. And they're kind of in clusters, little wee cluster of flowers. And it's almost like the, this whole cluster, the way the um, stems are, are duplicated, but in a smaller form in each one of these. It's really quite awesome to look at and to study. And they're spaced. You have the longer ones that go out and then there's uh, secondary. And they're kind of evenly spaced, almost like a mandala. So we're going to get some white here. And just so that we don't have to do a whole bunch of uh, little lines, I'm just going to concentrate where the flowers would be. So I'm going to have so these little clusters of uh, flowers that I would see. Because it's a little bit further away, we're not going to get um, to see it like close up. So I'm not worried about counting how many petals or, you know, stuff like that. And I'm seeing it from a side view. So we're going to get a little bit of a um, concentration of flowers in front here. To give that um, perspective. And just dotting. And it kind of goes into the center. All right. And then we'll take an offshoot from the hat. And we can either put a, a smaller one in or maybe leaves even. And the leaves are kind of furnish look to it. Very um, airy looking. So I'm going to just put some little airy looking ferny type of leaf there doesn't have to be anything crazy and um, let's put another one so we have these little brackets below here and they're almost ferny too they're, they've got uh, see that there. See how they're very ferny almost. So each one has that and then you have the little brackets. So maybe we'll make this one um, starting to close up. And it's kind of like it's protecting the seed pods when it does this. It's really cool looking.
And then I'm going to take a little bit of this lighter color, actually. And I'm just going to dot some of this in here. And then also some of the other green. And then let's add a little bit of black on the side here and add some of that green to it just to darken it. And we'll add some of that also in there because it does get kind of dark in the center. The seeds are all closes right up to a like a little ball. Okay, we'll let that dry. And let's put a nice big one right here. So I'm going to just put up another stem. So let's let's go right up into here. Now these stems here are probably going to be covered anyway, so I'm not too worried. And let's make this one more. Um, Head on. So I'm, I'm going to see a little, kind of a little ball right in the center. And then from that ball, we have all these lines jetting out. And they're different. Uh, lengths. Some are uh, real long, some are shorter. So it all depends on how big you want to make the flower. And then there's uh, shorter ones, medium. that. I like that. A, star, a really big star. And I think I'm going to put maybe a little bit of a light, lighter touch to that center. Like that. And then we're going to add the flowers. So the flowers are just a bunch of dots in a circle. And there's different uh, sizes. But they're all on the very end of these little stems that make the flower. Now you could use uh, one of the, what are they called? Those uh, people use them for rock painting. Um, stylus and get a specific size dot if you want. I like random myself, but you may like them more uniform in shape. Just go around. I'm not worried about uh, number of petals. It's because each one of these little dots is actually a flower in itself. And another set of five, six petals. Quite interesting to look at and study.
And some of them are uh, a lot more fuller than others. They're, they're a little different, each one. So don't worry if, if uh, yours isn't the same as mine. They're all different anyways. Okay. But you do want it kind of uh, airy looking. All right, that looks pretty good. So I have my background with this. So I'm gonna let those dry. And while they're drying, let's try one of these dahlias. So there's one that's just started opening. So we have that um, goes around. It's got a kind of a pointed but round shape. So the inside color is green in the center, but if you look down into the um, flower itself, it's very, very dark in there. So the best thing to do for painting these, uh, look at your flower, see how dark the, the background of them are and use that color first. Now, if you notice, the outer edge here is a little bit lighter, so it's not quite as dark as the center here. So what you can do is decide how dark you want it. So I've got naphthol, or na Napa red here. It's a nice dark red. And I also have, let's see, true burgundy. Now, I think this one will probably do for the outer edge. It's a little bit um, dark, but not too dark. Let's see. Um, then we have also Napathol Crimson for some of the lighter red areas. So I don't want to add white to my red because then it'll turn pink. A little bit of that for the brighter areas. And we could go burgundy or just add a touch of black to our darkest red here. I already have, let's see, that's not a true black though. So let's try a sample here just to see what um, color I would get. This is the only thing about uh, some of these paints is that it's hard to tell if you'll get the color you want because you don't know what uh, pigments they've used. Yeah, that's going to work out. It'll be more on the purpley side. That should work. And then the, the uh, center of this one is a little bit on the green side. So kind of that... Um, citron green. So this is uh, lemonade, it's called. So I'm going to add a little bit of lemonade here. Okay, so we can start off with the outer edge. Um, so let's do this color here and I think I'm going to have it um, facing us, not on an angle. I might do one on an angle, but I really like the center. So I know that, uh, let's put it right in here. So I'm just going to make a ring. And this is where I'm going to have my outer petals. And we'll make the uh, shapes as we go. So don't worry about it being just a circle. That's just a guide us. And then 
adding a little bit of black to that, so just a smidge. I'm going to take some of this over here. I'm going to add a little bit more black just to darken that. And that'll go in here. Just along the side of the other red, but it's a little bit darker. And then we have, I'm going to put that bright green in the center. I don't want to mix my uh, red and green together, so I'm going to be a little bit careful. You could dry it. in the center and that's the, the base coat of my first dahlia um, now we could do the other one so it's uh, more or less full so you can see how there is a lot of that deep color so let's add a little bit more that dark color and I think I'll put one right in here so the inside is fairly dark and uh, I don't have that uh, green center in this one because it's an older flower and then it's, it's fairly big so we'll start off with that and then we'll take that other color, it's a little lighter, and we'll go around with that. And that's our base coat for the second one. Now I can do one uh, on a side view. And the side view, you can see there's quite a bit of dark in the center here, the way we're viewing it. So we want that dark color. Let's put that over here, I guess. Too much water. And You're kind of flat on the top the way I'm viewing it. And a little bit of that lighter color around the side here in the bottom. We can always change it as we go too. It's a nice thing about acrylics. Okay, and if you notice, the stems are almost burgundy also. So you can use probably the same color. Okay, and let's give that a uh, dry. So I hope you guys are all experimenting in your journals or your sketchbooks and challenging yourselves to do something you haven't done before or maybe something that you're struggling with because it takes practice and 
mistakes in order to succeed in uh, what you're doing. It doesn't matter what it is, art, whatever it is, there's always mistakes. And that's what we learn from. There we go. Okay, that's not too bad. Now I can take, let's see, I think I want to use a filbert brush to make my petals. And just looking to see what size I have here. <clears throat> Mm, that's a bit big. There's a good one. Okay, here's, I've got a number six, Filbert. Filbert is something that's got a rounded top. And, okay, let's try this one first. So, might have to get a little bit of a smaller there's the shapes. So we can get this bright red here. Let's try it. And I'm just going to uh, put it in front of me. You want to start with the outer edge first. So they're um, a little bit bigger. And they're not all the same. And you can mix up your colors. You don't have to have them all the same. Maybe you want a little bit of a darker um, area on part of it. You could double load, <clears throat> turn your brush in different ways, It'll give you a different uh, stroke for your petal. Put in some darker areas too. We just want that outer edge. So it's not uh, like it was. Okay. Then just continue. Try not to have too much water in your brush. And then you kind of go ha halfway on your first layer and just keep doing the same thing. You can mix your colors a little bit. But you do want to show Some of the petal shape. Okay. Now sometimes it's a little easier to dry if if uh, your paper's too wet, or you don't want to uh, mix your bottom layer with your next layer. So I got quite a bit of paint on here. So if I were to try and paint when it's just starting to dry, I'd actually lift the paint instead of painting on it. Okay. So then another, uh, let's see, another layer, maybe a little bit uh smaller petals. And then we'll go back with another color and a liner brush to define some of these. 
They're not all going to be defined, but some of them will be. Okay. We are leaving some of that dark showing through too. And then I have a little bit of the real dark, dark, just starting in here. So I'm just going to add a little bit of that dark right in here, here and there. Not, not totally on everything, but little pieces like that. Okay. Now, I think what I'm going to do now is take my brush, just uh, that round number, what is it, number one, and make little C marks as I go around. I, because you're just seeing just the tip of these petals now. And as we uh, get closer to that green part, We'll start adding a little bit of that green here and there too. And some of the dark, but it's just basically little marks, like a C mark here and there. Keep going around. And then as you get closer to the very center, leave it. We'll add uh, probably a little bit of, let's put some of this in, this other color here. Because so we don't see a whole lot of uh, the green, just bits and pieces along this edge here. A hint of it. Okay, like that. We'll let that dry and we'll continue on to these and do the same thing. So again with our filbert, that bright red if you find there's not too much of a difference in the red, you can uh, brighten it up a little bit by either adding a little yellow, or if you have another brighter red, you can use that too. This one isn't the best shape. It's kind of looking a little bit frayed on the end, but we'll work with it. That. As we go, don't, don't cover up all the, the darker sections. Um, and we're just doing very, very small marks, not too big as we go in because we're, they're bunched together. So you're not going to see them uh, as a whole. So just a little bit. And then we'll go back in with uh, a liner and 
detail them. Okay, this one has that. And this one's going to be uh, a side view. So it's a little bit different. It's almost going on an angle. If you see the around the bottom here, it's down. But as we start to go up, see how they're kind of curving? It's... Uh, And then pay attention to how they're laying. So they're um, a little bit curved as you go up more into the center here. And then just kind of little, little dabs on the top. You really have to play with this. Uh, I'm going fairly quick here. So Kind of have to, uh, you might have to do these a few times, like I know I will. <laughs> okay, that's a good start. So it kind of gives you the look. Now let's dry that and we'll start doing a little bit of detail. All right, let's start off with this one here. And I'm gonna use my brush, my little number one. And I'm looking at it and seeing uh, what kind of shapes need a little bit of a lighter. Now I need a lighter color. So this one was Napathol. So what? cherry red be a little bit lighter. If not, I'll put a little bit of yellow in. We'll see. Looks pretty darn close to being the same. So let's put a little dab of yellow in here. Just to change it up a little bit, I'm just going to put it on the side here. Let's let's test it first. So I'm going to take some of this over here and a little bit of red and yellow. Let's see what we get. Might be too pink. I'm not sure. This was. Um, sun bright yellow so it might have had a little bit too much white in it so what we're looking at as uh, kind of outlining these aren't going to be perfect but see the you kind of see how you're seeing the, the edges of the petals so you kind of want to see I 
kind of just kind of outline some of these. Give them a little bit more dimension. That's not bad. It's a very, very, very faint difference. I think I'll add a little bit more yellow to that. Let's see what that looks like. Remember, your um, your petals are overlapping each other. So I'm just doing just uh, evening up, uh, evening, evening leveling out <laughs> uh, some of these outer petals just so that it and then we have some we don't have to do them all and some of them if you look at them some are a little twisted so they have a little bit of a thicker uh, line You need a fairly nice brush. You can always go back and correct things if you go too far with them, or maybe it doesn't look as overlapped anymore. You can go back and just add a little bit of the other color back into it. I remember when um, I did this one, I had a little bit of the C shapes because you're not looking at it hit, um, face on anymore. You're more, uh, you're just seeing the tips of them basically. Little C's. And you can always go back and, and put more whatever color you think you got carried away with. That. Let's make a little bit more of, the, of that color for these other ones. Now this one here. Actually, I wonder, let's try it. I'm looking at it. Uh, and I'm actually, it's too much water in my brush. Let's put a little bit more of this color in. And I'm actually seeing Kind of a V shape. Going like this. So this time I'm starting at the top. Remember it's overlapping each other. And we do have uh, quite a few of those dark areas in this center area. So don't cover all that black up. And then we start seeing kind of cupped down here. Yes. 
like that. And this one was head on. So this one is a little easier. You can see the shapes. So you want to draw those shapes with the color. So I'm going to start with the inside here. So I have little dots in the center. And as it goes out, they start to get a little bigger. You see shapes. And they curve a little bit more as you get out. And you just kind of have to overlap them a little bit to, to uh, give that look of Adelia. So you're looking at it head on. Take a look at a, a, a sh a shapes and how they're lining up. It's almost like um, scales. The way they line up. The center of a flower behind it centers around another one. Or scales is another way to look at it. This is a very quick rendition. You want to um, take your time and do a real um, more detailed. Just take your time and, and enjoy it. I'm Russian just because I don't want this video or this uh, live stream to be too long. Uh, YouTube does not like real long videos. Um, if you're enjoying this, though, I would really appreciate if you would hit the share button and copy. You don't have to share it. Just hit, hit copy. And that basically um, tells YouTube that you like it kind of tricks them in a way um, thinking that you've shared it but you really haven't so unless you really want to share it then that would be great too okay so let's try that And I'm going to put a little bit of this, um, what's it called? Mint Julep Green in some of these uh, stems that came in here. So they're a little bit lighter. And that'll show up a little bit nicer. Like that. That's what they they do anyways. And maybe well, maybe just a few in here connecting it. Like that. Wherever we're seeing some of these. A little bit more dimension to the stem. And also, I'm going to put a little bit of 
darker green in the center, just a few little dots. Like that. Now, what we can do, if you want to really emphasize some of these petals, what you can do is uh, take that dark, dark uh, burgundy color, and you can go into certain areas of that uh, center and darken some of those petals. So it gives them more depth. If you want, you can make more curves in here where it was dark. You can always paint over stuff with acrylics that's the nice thing don't ever think that you've made a mistake oh i gotta throw it out no nope. you can fix it so easily and uh if you really really don't like it gesso over it and use it again Okay, I'm going to use a little bit more of this and some more black. And I'm going to get my thing out here, take a look. And it could be just in the very, very edge of some of these and it's dark. It doesn't have to be. Uh, the whole thing. It's shadowed in some of these areas because they're overlapping each other. Especially in inside here. You can make uh, corrections. Maybe you didn't like the lines that thick. You could uh, spend time in uh, fix some of those by using the same color. I'm going to make this a little bit uh, darker in here because it it's fairly uh, concentrated with petals. We're going to see a lot more shadowed areas in here. Just play with them. Do a whole bunch in a, on a page just to experiment. Because like anything else, you have to experiment and play with things you want to understand how to paint them, what uh, brush techniques works the best, or what color combinations. Um, so many different ways of looking at it. Same here. Some the, Right in the V here, some of these are really, really dark. Just play. You do it on paper too. Don't do your first attempts on a canvas. As you'll be very, um, 
you'll be scared to do mess up your canvas. And when you're nervous about it, you're not going to like what you paint. You'll see that it's very stiff looking. So if you experiment on paper, and it can be, it doesn't have to be a special journal either. That's the, that's the cool thing is you can use, I'll tell you what I like to use, and you can throw all kinds of stuff on it and it's never going to pill or uh, uh, buckle, and that is file folders. Get yourself a bunch of cheap file folders from the dollar store and use those. You'll be surprised how awesome they are. All right, let's do those stems a little bit more paint so they're not so translucent. And some of these do have green on them too, but these particular ones are kind of burgundy. I think the, there's a bit of green on the very, uh, just underneath the flower. Okay, and what else can we do here? Let's put a little leaf. See the leaf here? So I'm looking at it this way. So let's, let's throw a leaf on here. So it kind of goes over. This one, twists up, and then I see it come up here, goes down like that, and then underneath is lighter. And I'm seeing the underneath of this one, the way I'm viewing it. And that's part of the top part. That kind of wraps around the stem like that. Okay. And I could take it another one here if I want. Um, I think that I'm just going to put that one there for now. Now there is a bit of a little bit of a light green area just down the center just to give it a little bit of a uh, shine. So just that. I'm going to kind of mix it. With that burgundy color. So I'm mixing on my paper to blend it in. Bit in here. Sometimes it can be just a very, very subtle type of thing. Like that. Ah. 
Okay, let's dry that. And now I'm going to add another highlight to it. Now, this is when I like to use colored pencil. I, I really like using colored pencil on craft paint because craft paint dries matte. Um, you can't do this on artist grade uh, acrylics unless you're using a matte form or if you uh, put a coat of matte medium over top of it, then you might be able to get away with it. Um, but I like using colored pencils for the last bit of detail. So with these um, dahlias, let's put a little bit of a pink in, let's see. Let's see if this is going to be light enough. I don't know. Yeah, it will. Perfect. So this one here is nectar. It's called. And I like. I don't. I. I guess that's the mixed media in me. I just love using colored pencil in my work, um, acrylic or uh, also watercolor. So I can add a little bit of shine. It doesn't have to be much. That's the thing. Um, and you can also emphasize th uh, really thin lines to give that little bit of glow or uh, cast um, light from whatever table or it just seems to make it. And it doesn't take much. I also uh, do this in portraits. So it just seems to finish it. It gives that special a fine detail sometimes you need. Now you can't overdo it too. So you gotta you gotta pay attention to your um, your shadows and highlights where they're going. Uh, this one uh, is working well because I have a very fine um, tip on it. So it's giving me a very, very fine mark because these petals have an outline on the very edges, which um, really finishes the look that you want. You could try and use a very fine uh, pen and ink if you want. I just find uh, colored pencils the easiest uh, way to get this done. Some areas might have a little bit more glow in them or just take a look at your reference and I do strongly recommend having a reference when you're doing anything coloring uh, painting, drawing, unless you have a photographic memory, you're not going to get it right. Your mind will tell you a generic form. 
and it won't look like what you want so there see how it just kind of boosts it And then this one was the green, and this one has kind of a little bit of a closed uh, of shape on some of them. Quite interesting. Remember the flowers kind of get smaller as we're going around here. And they're more or less little dots you're seeing. Uh, so we can put just little C's, curved C's. In, in along the edge here instead of a, a leaf shape and that'll give that indication of those individual little just they're just the very uh, tip that's showing because they're not quite open yet there so you're not really seeing the whole petal you're just seeing the very tip because it's still fairly close this one's newer and uh, you won't see the whole thing that's why you're seeing a bit of that green in there too and we'll put a little bit of green there is a little bit of green in there too just like that and then just a few on the in, just along the outer perimeter. Yeah, we'll put in. That. Okay. And then see the little little tips of green. So let's see if we can find a green here that will show up. It's light enough. Uh, don't know if this will show or not. Nope. Might have to use. Let's try this. Sharpen it. If not, I'll use um, I could use a Posca too for little marks. Let's see. Is this going to show up as green? No, it's not. So we'll, let's try a Posca in that bright green. I'm pretty sure I have one. It's not a Posca, but it'll do. It's one of these uh, acrylic pens. Or you could, if you don't have one, um, you could always use uh, a white Posca and then just uh, some paint. 
This one's not working the best, but I'll just... Get some... side here. Kind of blurped out. I think that'll work. All right. And then this leaf here. And it's a little bit of, where did I put that? Let's just the, right in here, the vein is lighter. So we'll just make that a little bit lighter. And then the underneath can be a little darker, the vein, because you'll be casting a bit of a shadow. Let's see if this will work. Nope, too light. Try this one, sharpen it. And we can kind of outline here. Just to give it a little bit more. Just shadow some of those veins a little bit. A little bit of a shadow. Ah, sorry. I think that's good. Let's see. I'm going to uh, put a little bit of a center in this, uh, a highlight in the Queen Anne's Lace stem, just to bring that out a little bit more. Maybe a bit of also take a little bit of a darker darken some of those in-betweens here so that they're showing up a little bit that center those were dark kind of shadow um, underneath them a little bit. I don't have to get too carried away, but it is nice to just add a little bit so that it brings them forward a little. Same with this here. Maybe it's a little darker in uh, the center of this where it's kind of
they are um, they're interesting. Bit of a shadow there. That one here. I'm just um, highlighting because of my background that I have here uh, kind of hides this a little bit because it's very pale looking. So this way it brings it forward a bit. And this uh, leaf can bring some of that out just a bit. It doesn't have to be detailed, ultra detailed or anything, but just helps your eye to travel around the page a little bit. Looks pretty good. And then we have our, our all of our background that kind of helps. Now, if you wanted to, you could either uh, lighten your background around the things that aren't quite popping. Um, and that'll help bring those up a little um, closer to you, looking like that. Or if you have something dark around, say, this here then it'll bring the flowers out more. It's up to you. Um, let me see. I can show you. I guess I could darken this a little bit. Let's see. With maybe a little bit of this. What is this? Antique teal. It's about the same color probably as... Uh, wasn't shook enough. I've had these paints for, gosh, probably 20 years. <laughs> and they're just starting to go now. So I really want to use them up. That's why I use them in my... Um, pages here. So you can just give this a wash. Kind of a glazing. And you can go back over the flowers too. Um, yeah, just darken the areas. It's just a little bit more uh, water on your brush. And just helps bring it out a little bit. Then just take a something before it dries, baby wipe or whatever you got. Usually you can just remove some of those paint marks that you have there. It'll bring them up. Or you can go back over them with a little bit brighter blue. See how it just bumps that up a little bit. So let's uh, do that in here. Just so that this shows a little bit more.
then you just wipe away those little marks from the glue. Then your flower shows through a little bit better. You can add as many coats as you want. But it gives it a little bit more, brings them for, forward a little bit more. And you can also do that with dark, if you have a dark background and you want more, um, the flowers to show more, then you lighten the background. All right, so I think that's it in how I tackle my um, dahlias. You, you have to experiment though. So go get some Queen Anne's lace or I'll show you, bring in a little bit more. So I'll show you. So there's the Queen Anne's lace and the Dahlia. Okay. So I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you'll give it a try. See what you can do with yours. And uh, just experiment. Have some fun with it. You never know what um, you're going to learn from doing an experiment in your sketchbook. All right. So, oh, wait a minute. I got somebody. Sorry, guys. Uh, oh, thanks, Kim. Love the green again. Yeah, isn't that pretty? Yeah, it's a combination uh Red is complement of green, so you're always safe when you go that way. <laughs> Look across your um, your wheel, your color wheel, and whatever's across from the color you want, that's the complement. So you're pretty safe if you want to uh, use that. All right, well, I'll let you guys go, and you have a fantastic weekend. Hopefully everything... Uh, goes well for you and uh, try and be creative. All right. Have a fantastic day, everybody. And we'll see you on Tuesday. Bye for now.